In this video, I will not be talking about laboratory grown diamonds. <gasps> Instead, I'll be reacting to this diamond here, which has been dubbed the largest faceted diamond ever, known as the Enigma. Hi, I'm Julia the Gemologist from the Gem Academy and welcome to my YouTube channel, the place for gem and jewelry professionals who would like to learn more about laboratory grown diamonds, usually. But hey, it's all relevant, so subscribe and let's talk about gems. Last week in the Gemmy News, the world's largest black diamond was announced as being up for sale at auction. And all the trade magazines have written about it and everyone's like, oh. And actually, when I first saw the image of the Enigma, I thought, awesome, I'm interested. So let's have a read together and learn more about this stone and why it's so special. And I'll add my two cents along the way. Okay. The Enigma. To start off, let's have a look at the Enigma. The Enigma natural diamond is a treasure from interstellar space. Oh, at a whopping 555.55 carats, it is the largest faceted diamond to come to auction. More than just its size, its cosmic origins and symbolic shape make it a collectible for the ages. Okay, now we've actually got enough stuff in this first paragraph that we could talk about for the whole YouTube video. So we'll start here and see where it goes. Now I'll be honest with you, when I first saw this photograph, I actually thought it was a rough diamond. And then when I read that it was faceted, I was quite disappointed actually. Oh, sorry. When it comes to diamond crystals, ah, oh, diamond crystals can be so beautiful and these crystals can be distorted and things. So on first glance, I actually thought this was a distorted crystal and it's not. So I'm very sorry that that's what I thought. Now the first thing you might wonder about is this claim that it's from outer space and whether it's true. Uh, basically, this stone is not just a black diamond. This is actually carbonado, which is a diamond material, but it is different. To give you a comparison, a black diamond, which you typically find set in jewelry and faceted, that's usually, well, first of all, usually it's treated. But if it's a natural one, what it will be is a single crystal of diamond that has so many black inclusions inside it that actually it looks black and then it's been faceted. Now, carbonado is not just diamond. If anything, it's more like a rock because it's a mixture of minerals and different materials. So it's mainly made out of polycrystalline diamond. So these are really, really tiny diamonds. We're talking like 20 to 30 microns in diameter which is really small. And these are all kind of mishmashed together in all random orientations. And in with that, we also have graphite that's all mishmashed together. And then there's also amorphous carbon, which I never know what that means. If you know what that means, let me know. <laughs> Don't know what they're talking about. And also in most carbonado and the enigma is no exception, they find something called osbornite. Now osbornite, until more recently, was only ever found in extraterrestrial rocks. So by that, we mean meteorites. So it was only found in that, so therefore, that's why we're linking it to coming from outer space. Now, they have since found it in one location on Earth, so in a terrestrial location, and that is Tibet. But I believe this diamond wasn't found in Tibet, so therefore, that's why they're banking on it being from outer space. And it is a shame that people keep calling it just a black diamond. It's more than that. When something's more than what its name suggests, it means that maybe it's been named incorrectly. And in this case, it should always be called carbonado, I think. Next up, let's talk about its size and whether it really is the largest black colored diamond slash carbonado in the world. As you can see, it's big, 555.55 carats. That's ridiculous. The Enigma was cut from rough that weighed over 800 carats. However, this is not the largest black carbonado diamond that has ever been found. 
In 1895, the Sergio diamond was found in Brazil. This weighed a gigantic 3,167 carats, technically making it the largest rough diamond ever found and certainly the largest carbonado to have ever existed. This does not exist anymore because it was smashed up into smaller pieces and used as industrial diamond. Other large carbonados have also been reported including weights of 577 carats, 750 carats, 975 carats, 3078 carats and then of course the Sergio at 3167. I'd like to talk about this sentence more, the sentence that states that it is the largest faceted diamond. Now they're not wrong, you know, they're, they're not wrong. But I don't know how everyone else feels about this. This makes me feel a bit weird. If we talk about the top three largest faceted diamonds that we public know about in existence, we have the very famous Cullinan One, which is the diamond that's in the Royal Scepter within the Crown Jewels. Now that is a 530 carat stone. Um, D color, VS clarity, stunning, stunning. Up until the Enigma, the diamond that had the title as being the largest faceted diamond in the world was the Golden Jubilee. Now this is a 545 carat diamond. Now both of these diamonds were cut from large single crystals of diamond. The Enigma is different as it is a mass of polycrystalline diamond along with other minerals. So the Golden Jubilee still holds the title for the largest faceted diamond that's made out of one single diamond and the Cullinan One holds the title for the largest high quality diamond. Going back to the Enigma, the Enigma in the rough was just over 800 carats so they've lost about 250 carats in the cutting process. So to be fair black diamonds can't be cut for light performance anyway because they're opaque but it's not a traditional diamond cut. They didn't have to lose loads of weight for it. They've literally, and there doesn't seem to be any pattern to the cutting. So really yield retention isn't a massive success in this case. Now this leads us on to talking more about the design of the cut that they've used on this stone, because actually, they have put a lot more thought into it than what I just gave it credit because actually they've specifically aimed to make it 555.55 carats and there's a reason that it's got 55 facets and that's because of what the design symbolizes. So the design is based on the Hansa. The Hansa is a Middle Eastern symbol which symbolizes protection, power and strength now this symbol is associated with the number five and this is why it's carat weight and the number of facets are completely constructed out of the number five. I would agree that it would have required someone very highly skilled to facet this stone because carbonado is meant to be so freaking tough with all those different hardness directions. I don't even know how they would have faceted it. They would have had to, it wouldn't just be with diamond powder, I reckon maybe they had like a diamond impregnated polishing wheel or something and maybe it wore out a lot. It would have been difficult. Whoever cut it should have massive kudos for doing what they've done because it is impressive. Let's have a look what Sotheby's says. The Enigma is an exquisite and extremely rare carbonado type black diamond. Ah, huh, they've just put it all in one. That's great. The largest fancy black natural colour diamond in the world as of 2004 and the GIA and Gublin said that and the largest cut diamond in the world as of 2006. So this has been here for a while. Its estimated value is between four and seven million but it could sell for much higher because of its record breaking size. If we break it down at the value of four million if that was the total price paid, so the hammer price plus any of the buyer's premiums, we're still talking about 7,200 US dollars per carat. If it did go for 7 million divided by 555.55 carats, that's 12,600 US dollars per carat. 
That's a lot of dollars per carat. Especially when you consider that carbonado has never really been sold as a gem before. I know that other fancy coloured diamonds go for a lot more, but too right, because they are prettier, they're transparent, they're wearable. I don't know. I'm getting a similar feeling for this stone than I did for that really, really big star sapphire that was found uh, several years ago now where they estimated it at like a hundred million and it's like no because no one could wear it it's not that pretty it doesn't it's not all just about size people it's not about size overall i would say this is a really interesting stone it's not really a gem in regards to its quality, the fact that it's not wearable, it certainly is more of a collector's piece. But I think the most impressive thing is what it is. Like the hypothesis that it might come from space and the fact that it was cut at all is pretty impressive. It does have the title for the world's biggest carbonado black diamond and it does technically have the title for the biggest faceted diamond. However, due to its polycrystalline nature and freeform fasting style, it might be more appropriate for it to be titled the biggest diamond material with facets. <laughs> That's it from me. If you work with diamonds, subscribe to this YouTube channel as I'll be here for you on Tuesdays talking about laboratory grown diamonds or maybe something else. I hope you enjoyed this video by the Gem Academy. Feel free to ask me questions and post your comments below and I'll see you next week for more. Subscribe and I'll see you soon.